The weekly demand for sugar in the U.S. is given by Q equals 500 minus 10p. Quantity is in millions of pounds. Price is in cents per pound. Please pay attention to the dimensions of the problem. So if you wanted to translate this into dollars, you'd move the decimal point over two places. The domestic supply in the U.S. is Q equals 10p. So there's no intercept term. Notice it will pass through the origin then with a slope of 10. While the current world market price is 10 cents per pound, the U.S. imposes a tariff of 10 cents per pound on top of that 10 cents for the world market. So if the world market price is given at 10 with the tariff in the U.S. the price would be 20. World price plus tariff. When the tariff is imposed the quantity of imports goes down. So with free trade we plug in a price of 10 into the excess demand. So you would take the demand minus the supply so the excess demand, which is imports, would be 400 minus 100 is this horizontal segment right here, or the difference between 400 and 100, which is 300. When the tariff of 10 cents is imposed, the U.S. price goes to 20, and the distance between the quantity demanded in the U.S. and the quantity supplied, 500 minus 20p, at a price of 20. 20 times 20 is 400, so the import should be 100. Or you can plug the 20 in on the demand equation first, and you'll get 300 as the quantity being demanded at a price of 20. At a price of 20, the quantity supplied by U.S. suppliers is 200, 10 times 20. So the distance between the quantity being supplied by U.S. suppliers and the quantity being demanded by U.S. consumers is 100. The problem asks you to define the government revenue when there's a tariff. So the tariff is 10 cents per pound on 100, so 10 times 100 is 1,000. This would be 1,000 million cents. Area C is 10, the tariff, times 100, the imports, 10 cents, and 100 million pounds, so 1,000 million cents. Move the decimal point two places over $10 million. What is the social welfare cost of imposing a tariff? The answer in traditional economic theory is that imposing a tariff is always a cost on society and more importantly that imposing a tariff imposes two distortions on the economy. For one, notice that when you have a tariff, the domestic suppliers will supply more. The, remember the domestic suppliers do not pay the tariff, the tariff is on imports. So they are seeing a price of 20 which causes them to produce more. And they're saying, as long as I can produce it for less than 20, for example, if they would produce at a cost of 19 and sold at the price of 20, then they would make a small profit on the last unit. So area B is part of the increased cost of production. So that's called a supply-related distortion or a cost-related distortion. What that means is that if there were free trade, the U.S. producers would stop at 100 because the cost of producing the 101st unit is greater than 10. But once the price goes up to 20, they will see a profit if the price they charge is higher than the cost of production, and therefore they will engage in the increased production, which comes at an increased cost to society. So area B is called a supply or production related distortion. We distort the social welfare by using domestic resources when those resources could have gone to produce something else, but there's a profit opportunity there. And another familiar distortion is on the demand side. We've crowded out the last 100 million pounds, let's say 100 million customers for now. We've crowded this out because the higher price causes individuals to reduce the quantity they demand. So society loses the social welfare associated with the last 100 million pounds, where we're saying that if you could get it at a price of 10, the consumers are getting more value than they're actually paying for. So area D is that surplus value that's being lost. Area B is that increased cost of producing domestically something that the rest of the world can supply at a much cheaper price. So we say there are two distortions, a production or supply related distortion under the supply curve and a demand or consumption related distortion under the demand curve, areas B plus D, that represents the social welfare cost of having a tariff. We can calculate the areas B and D because they're triangles. The height of the triangle is 10. The base of the triangle is 100. So one half of 10 times 100 is one half of 1,000 is 500. Again, the dimensions are millions of cents. Likewise, area D, height is 10, base is 100. So again, it's 500 million cents. 
So the social welfare costs would be 1,000 million cents or $10 million. Under free trade, the foreign supplier supplies 300 at a price of 10. So 300 times 10 is 3,000, 3,000 million cents or $30 million. So the foreign supplier would earn $30 million. But if there is a tariff, the foreign supplier will only supply 100 and they will only be able to charge a price of 10 because the price of 20 involves another 10 that goes to the government. So they sell it to the customers for 10, they pay the government another 10. So the area J is all that foreign suppliers will obtain if we have a tariff. So they would get 100 times 10 is 1,000, 1,000 rather than 3,000. And therefore the foreign supplier loses H plus K and this means that trade has cost the foreign supplier, has cost the domestic society. These are the distortions associated with having tariffs. Notice that if the foreign country feels that they have been unfairly treated, they might impose a tariff on an American product, in which case we have the same thing happening in a second industry where the foreign country's customers will get less because of the tariff on American goods assuming of course that we are exporting something to them and uh, we have distortions on both sides of the border because of tariffs the size of the tariff that prevents trade this is another important question the tariff that prevents trade is the tariff that causes trade to go to zero at a price of 25 domestic demand is equal to domestic supply so if we impose a tariff of 15 it would drive away all foreign trade and that would be the size of what is called the tariff that prevents trade. So the answer to part D is 15.